In part one, we split our screen between command line and file browser on the right. In this video, we're just going to look at uh, a few basic commands. We'll look at things like pwd, ls, and cd. If you're already familiar with those commands, you feel comfortable there, great. If not, you might want to watch this one. So uh, let's start with the pwd command. stands for print working directory or present working directory. And you can see it's telling me that I am currently in the home student folder. Now, if I come over here towards the top, in this case, I have to click on this little arrow. It just depends on what version of Linux you're using. You can see it's going to give me the full absolute file location. And that absolute file location in this case is home student. So you can see we're in the same place. Now, another key component of this command line here, and most Linux distributions are going to do this by default, is it has several different components. Student at, so I can see that the user I'm logged in as is student. Yours could be another name. You can see the host name of the machine has been set to student hyphen virtual box. And you can see that there's a tilde symbol here. That tilde symbol uh, is sort of representative, is representative of the user's home directory on Linux. So by typing pwd, I can see that I'm in home student. And because there's a tilde here, I know that I'm in the user's home directory. We're going to see that tilde change as we start to navigate and move to different places within this command line. There's also a dollar sign, which in this case means that I am not currently the root user. I'm going to have to type a command called sudo in order to access or run commands that require administrative elevation. All right, so print working directory is a good one. A lot of times uh, you'll use that from time to time, just pwd where am I, right? Let's use the ls command. Now the ls command will list if you type it by itself without any Anything that comes after it, it will list the contents of your current directory. And so you can see I have desktop documents, downloads. We have the same thing, desktop documents, downloads, music, pictures. What we have on the right mirrors what we have on the left. And that's why this is helpful, because as we move, we're going to kind of keep pace over here on the right and see our changes in real time. So that ls command is also a very important one. Uh, let's go ahead and use cd, which is change directory, cd. And in this case, I want to move into the downloads folder. Now, this is important because the downloads folder is right here. There are two ways I can do this. And for people who are new to Linux and new to file systems, I find this is one you have to think about because we run into it quite a bit. I can either CD into DOW, and then I you can use the tab key on Linux quite a bit. It will autocomplete in many different situations. So instead of typing the whole word downloads, I'm going to try type a capital, it's case sensitive, DOW, and I'm going to hit the tab key. And you can see that it, it recognizes that, oh, there's a folder right here that's called downloads. Now, this downloads folder is also it really in its absolute location is in home student. So I could use a relative location and say, take me into downloads. Or I could use an absolute location, say, take me to home slash. And again, I'm going to type ST. In my case, my user is student tab. I'm like D-O-W, downloads. And so these two commands then essentially do the same thing from home student. 
can move into downloads directly or I can say take me into the absolute location of downloads. So let's do the same thing over here on the right. I'm going to double click downloads and you can see there's nothing currently in the downloads folder. So let's type ls on the left here to verify that. I'm going to type ls. I'm going to hit enter. And you can see that there's nothing here because we get no output. Well, let's add a file over on the right. Doesn't really matter what Linux distribution you're using. Pretty easy to add a file from a file browser. Right click. You will find something like create document, create text file. I'm going to create an empty file in this case. Call it something like mytext.txt. So now I have a text file over here on the right in the downloads folder. On the left, I'm also in the downloads folder. Let's run that ls command again after creating that file. And you can see our list current directory shows us that there is indeed now a file called mytext.txt. Again, I find having these two things next to each other at these beginning levels can be pretty helpful. All right, let's learn one more command here uh, in this video, and it's the most dangerous command you can learn on Linux. The nice thing about working within a virtual environment like this is if you make a mistake that bricks the operating system or completely breaks it, it's just a virtual operating system, right? Hopefully you have a backup. They're very easy to restore. So you want to be sure you're working in a virtual machine as we work through some of these. Uh, we're going to delete the file mytext.txt. And it's very easy to delete files like this that are critical for the operating system or your life using the rm command because rm means remove. And if you guessed that it will indeed remove what you, what you pointed at, you would be correct. It will remove whatever you tell it to remove. So I'm going to type rm my tab because there's only one file in downloads called my text so I can use my and then the tab to autocomplete that. So I'm saying okay let's remove my text.txt. I'm going to hit enter. You can see it instantly is gone from the right as well. So in this video uh, we worked with a pwd We've worked with the ls command. You can see I also typed clear at one point, it looks like. Um, the change directory command and the rm command to delete things. Okay, uh, we'll move on and we'll continue working with basic file system navigation in the next video.